And how long have you been back with the Bureau? Three and a half months, sir. A lot has happened since then. Sabbaticals, transfers, reassignments. Four of you remained in the unit? Agents Rossi, Morgan, and I were there with our technical analyst, Penelope Garcia. Hmm. You had 14 cases in that time. 17, sir. Oh, yes, in 14 weeks. That's impressive. Thank you. But what's more impressive is the fact that you were reinstated, promoted, and suspended in that short time. I believe that's a record, Agent Giroux. Two days? That's correct. How can an investigation be active for just two days when the gathering of intel took months? There's surveillance and hundreds of man hours to prove it. Yes, that's true, but... How often do you spend months on a case, Agent? We don't, but this one was... Personal? Different. It required a lot of detail. This was too big for your team. Why wasn't it a joint task force? We didn't have time, sir. Once the subject was confirmed, we had to act quickly. Do you realize what you've done? Yes, we put an international criminal with terrorist connections in federal custody. You may consider that a victory, but you use government funds for a personal vendetta. Never called Homeland Security. And now six people, including two of your agents, are dead. Interpol, Europol, the CIA. No one could locate Ian Doyle, except Agent Morgan. Well, it wasn't easy. Doyle disappeared underground. Looks like Agent Morgan spent the first few months following Doyle's arms-dealing contacts, but came up empty. So, how did he find him? After hitting dead ends in that world, Agent Morgan put himself in Doyle's shoes and knew that he would be looking for his son, Declan. Did you trust Agent Giroux? I did. But don't anymore. I didn't say that. You left her out, but involved Penelope Garcia, whom you trust. That is not why. Isn't it? Her specific skills were very helpful. For your vendetta. For justice. You don't believe in the system. Ian Doyle wasn't at the top of anyone's list, Senator. Except yours. You watched Declan for two months. I knew if I could find him, it was only a matter of time before Doyle did. Round the clock surveillance requires constant presence. When I wasn't in the field, I was there. When you were on a case? I set up poll cameras for surveillance. Under what authority, Agent? Senator, I needed to protect this child because I knew Doyle would find him eventually. And what was the plan once you found Ian Doyle? Lock down security on his son and then move in on Doyle. That's when Agent Morgan initiated the assault on Ian Doyle. What? No, it doesn't work that way, sir. Agent Morgan called hot. Excuse me, our unit chief. Who was on temporary duty. Imagine he wasn't easy to find. When the team downsized, he was assigned to lead an investigative task force. The shot agent? Because a bullet to Ian Doyle's brain would have ended his life too easily? You wanted him to suffer. He deserved the same beating he gave Prentice, but I did not unleash that on him, Senator. No, you didn't. Instead, your actions put an innocent child's life on the line. Have you ever been in the field? I have, but I'm not the one on trial, Agent. Well, then maybe you can imagine what it was like for Agent Morgan to find Emily Prentice dying at the hands of Ian Doyle. Now ask yourself, was it wrong for him to want to take that man out? He was referring to Agent Prentice. That's correct, sir. The government spent $17,400 on her funeral and another $642,000 on medical expenses. But this is no surprise to you. And she stayed there until she was well enough to travel. I trust you called the Baltimore City Police. No, sir. Well, certainly the Harbor Police. No, sir. Why didn't you? Last I checked, it takes an hour to drive from headquarters to Baltimore. And I see your phones were working. You're the one who suggested Ian Doyle be released. I am. And you're the only agent who has not requested reinstatement to the unit. Mm-hmm. Was the decision to release Ian Doyle a personal one? A young boy's life was at stake. I ran the probability of his survival, and it wasn't good. If you want to punish me for taking a risk, then I encourage you to do that. But do not put the rest of my team on trial for something that I suggested. Calm down, Agent. This is calm, and it's doctor. The United States government is not in the business of trading captives. New York City, July 2010, referred to as the spy swap. Igor... That's enough. 
You can't just change the rules, sir. And you just can't break them. This team took many unprecedented risks. None were approved. The Diog has rules, and you chose to ignore every last one. That's blatant disrespect to the Bureau and to authority of law in general. What I find interesting is that you are the experts in behavior, but find nothing wrong with yours. May I? The journey was not traditional, but this team neutralized four international criminals and saved the life of a young boy in the process. You started a war with Ian Doyle years ago that this team and the US government had to finish. The rest of you were dismissed. Agent Prentice, we're not done. The only people I know who could accomplish that mission just walked out. They do their jobs with integrity. And most importantly, they honor their oath. I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I am about to enter. So help me God. <laughs>